What to expect if Congress can't come to a budget deal and the government shuts down. All that and more today, September 25th, 2023. Good morning, early birds. I'm Simone Perez, and this is the Early Bird Brief, produced by Defense News and Military Times. Today, Military Times Capitol Hill Bureau Chief Leo Shane III joins the episode today to break down what folks should expect if the government shuts down on October 1st. So, Leo, thank you for joining us today, and if you had to bet, how would you bet about the possibility of a government shutdown? I mean, if I had money to gamble, I'd be putting a lot on we're going to see a shutdown at the end of the week. It doesn't look like uh, either the Republicans or the Democrats are close to finding a, a solution to this budget impasse. We are, are just a few days away at this point. September 30th is when uh, the Congress turns into a pumpkin and we run out of time. And, you know, right now there's there's a couple of last minute uh, b- budget plans floating around out there, some continuing resolutions that could keep things open. But we've also heard from a number of mostly conservative lawmakers saying they intend to stand in the way of this. So it's looking like when when federal workers show up to work next Monday morning, a lot of them are going to be sent home right away because there's just not any money to fund the government. What should we be expecting if the government shuts down? How will folks outside of Washington see the shutdown impact them, whether it's at the VA VA facilities or military service members or in other areas of the government, too? Yeah. So, look, it's a partial government shutdown. Not everything immediately grinds to a halt. And one of the big things for the the veteran and the military audience is that uh, most veteran services actually wouldn't shut down. They're funded a year in advance. So VA hospitals are going to stay open. Um, VA benefits are still going to get paid. VA burials are still going to happen. And the military is still going to be required to show up and, and work. They'll still be defending the country. They'll still be doing some training missions, although non-essential ones will be canceled. A lot of guard and reserve activities will be canceled. Canceled. Bases will remain open, but things like daycares, commissaries could be closed down. Um, a lot of that, the, the specifics will be hashed out this week. The biggest impact for the military is going to be, even though they're required to work, they may not get paychecks. Um, they'll get their, their paychecks at the end of this week. But if the shutdown drags on until the middle of next month, uh, military pay will be delayed until a new budget is passed. And so hearing that you've got to keep working, but you might not get paid is not exactly a, a thrilling uh, sales point for a lot of service members. We're also going to see a lot of government workers furloughed, even though their pay will be guaranteed for whenever they come back. A lot of them are going to show up next Monday and be sent home. That's Defense Department civilians, uh, some VA central office folks. When we had a a big shutdown like this back in 2013, it was almost 800,000 federal workers who got sent home and waited around for Congress to figure this out. So um, national parks can be closed. Uh, some will stay open. Some will stay closed. A lot of services, non-essential services will be, will be shuttered temporarily. So this is something that really every American will see and military families especially will, will start to see a lot of the, the things that, that are normal around base suddenly start to, to close down or at least be limited in, in their availability. So troops won't be paid if the government shuts down? So right now, troops aren't going to get paid, but there are a handful of different um, uh, proposals in Congress to make sure that military pay is protected. When, in 2013, the last time we saw a shutdown of this size, Congress passed legislation in the, the few hours before a shutdown started to make sure that paychecks still went out to troops. Military families didn't see all the headaches that they could have seen. And it looks like Congress is headed that way again this year. There's a proposal by uh, Virginia Republican Jennifer Kiggins in the House and uh, Alaska Republican Dan Sullivan in the Senate to make sure that troops pay is protected, that um, that they uh, don't see any paycheck disruptions, um, this time not just for the, the four armed services, but for the Coast Guard, who is housed in the Department of Homeland Security and has its own special problems when it comes to pay. Um, It would not surprise me if in the last few hours before a shutdown happens, we see some some scrambling around and some extra protections for military families. But it's going to be in the last few hours. Everything's happening at the at the 11th hour at this point. So it's just adding to the stress level and the uncertainty that that military families and troops are seeing. So why is Congress unable to come to an agreement on funding the government 
you know, what are the roadblocks lawmakers are running into? This isn't just, from my understanding, a Democrat versus Republican fight, right? There's also some inter-party infighting. Yeah, look, you know, this isn't a this isn't a traditional Democrats versus Republican fight. This is also a Republican versus a Republican fight. It's been uh, quite the dynamic up here. The Senate has tried to get some of their regular budget bills passed, but they've been stymied in recent days because of some senators objecting to the process. Meanwhile, over in the House, they've been really set on passing the defense budget um, and a few other budgets, um, but have found themselves in the same problem with members of their own caucus for not making deep enough cuts in other areas of the budget. So what has happened is there's been a lot of focus on the regular order on getting a full year budget passed and not as much attention on getting just some sort of temporary budget solution to make sure that government stays open past next week. We have seen a couple of proposals floated in the last few days here, and that's what the main focus will be for most of this week is just getting something moving ahead so that maybe government will stay open next week. But that's likely to fail, too. We've just heard from uh, some far right folks in the Senate and in the House saying they won't vote for short term deals because they're concerned about government spending because they don't like the process for for a whole variety of reasons. But it leaves Speaker McCarthy and uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer in in a bind here where in the past we've seen some uh, some agreements between Democrats and Republicans. In this case, if the Republican caucus can't even agree with itself, there's not really a starting point to move from. So that's what's increasing most of the tension here and, and leading most folks to believe that that we're headed for for a shutdown next week. And although not related to the grander government shutdown, some other news on the Hill from this previous week, the defense budget bill has also run into roadblocks from being passed. The House version of the defense budget bill has also run into some roadblocks. What are some of the policies that are really keeping this bill from getting more bipartisan support? So look, there's there's been a lot of uh, fighting over the defense budget in recent days, and there was some hope that maybe there was a way to at least get the defense budget through the House and the Senate uh, in the in the waning days of September here so that the Defense Department would be funded. But the House proposal to fund the Defense Department has a lot of controversial policies in it, uh, including rescinding the entire military abortion access policy, limiting transgender health care, limiting uh, diversity and equity training, things that Democrats have said are no go. Um, so the Republicans over in the House can't get their own caucus to vote on that. But even if they could, it's probably dead on arrival in uh, in the Senate and the White House has threatened to veto it. So all of that means while there's been a lot of focus on is there a way to get the defense budget through, there's still not really an, a realistic path to fund the Defense Department, Defense Department and any other agency. So uh, so again, we're just looking at what will the last minute deals be, what will the last minute uh, Hail Marys be to try and find something that keeps everything in the government from shutting down. That's it for us this morning. To get more top stories and breaking news, go to defensenews.com slash EBB to subscribe to the Early Bird Brief newsletter. Please give us a like, rating, and a comment wherever you get your podcasts, and be sure to follow us on social media at defense underscore news and at military times. The Early Bird Brief is hosted and produced by me, Zimone Z. Perez. Today's episode featured stories by Leo Shane III. Our audio editor is Jessica Edwards, and our editor-in-chief is Mike Gruse. Have a great day.